Hey, what's up? I got some more lore content for you guys. With each passing week, the meta evolves more and more. Three decks in particular have come up as huge meta contenders for this patch, and I'm here to share them with you. Trust me, you don't want to miss out. That way you have a good understanding of what's strong, whether you want to play the best decks themselves, or if you want to know how to counter them. Let's see what these strong decks are, shall we? Welcome to Meta Report. And starting us off, we have the deck that has shot up to the top of the meta, Nasus Vegar Vaults. With a win rate of 54.55% and a play rate of 3.48%, it is a very good deck to pick up right now. The best matchups for this deck are Sundisk, Nar Jin Control, Darkness, and also Poro King. The worst matchups are Fizz Samira, Karma Set, Teemo Condense, and also Jinx Cannon Discard. So I have covered Vaults of Helia before, so to quickly run it down, we have Vaults itself. This is a landmark, and this is basically the cornerstone of the deck and what is causing the deck to not only function, but also pop off. It says, round start if you can, kill your most expensive ally to summon an ally from your deck that costs exactly one more. So this allows us to do something called mana climbing. We're going to climb each turn from like let's say one mana to two mana to three to four, right? Getting out units of ascending mana in that order. This is obviously really good if you can play vaults on four and immediately have a five cost unit after because then it's going to eat the five cost unit and summon a six cost unit. Now the only six cost unit we summon is Nasus. Nasus is also the other cornerstone of the deck, one of the big pressure tools that this deck is trying to get to because whenever vaults kills an ally to summon one from deck, that counts as a slay for Nasus. So he is ever growing over the course of the game, which makes him really scary as soon as he appears for even the first time. After Nasus is on the board for one turn, the vaults will kill him and then summon Rekindler from the deck, which is our seven cost unit, the only one that we run, so it's guaranteed. And then Rekindler will summon the Nasus that now has another plus one. So you can kind of see how this gets out of control as soon as you hit vaults plus some mid game units. The deck is also equipped with some early game removal tools, things to slow down the opponent, Forsaken Bakai for uh, consistency as well, and then it also has Rock Bear Shepherd. Rock Bear Shepherd is really interesting because he summons a landmark right away, and when this landmark counts down, you get a Grumpy Rock Bear, which, fun fact, is a 5 cost unit. So even if the opponent is able to stop your development, they also have to deal with the Rock Bear, and then if they don't, Rock Bear is going to die and go climb up into Nasus, right? So yeah, it's really annoying. But to just break down each card uh, very quickly, Quietus is removal, Ceaseless Sentry is a draw card and consistency tool, and also you can climb Sentry up into Rock Bear Shepherd. So it's important during deck building to have like at least one unit of each cost. So we have like Bakai that dies and climbs up into the Sentry, that climbs up in the Shepherd, that climbs up into Vagar, and that climbs up into Rampaging Bakai, and then Nasus, right? So that's really, really important. So yeah, that's why it's in here. It's also really nice to just be a draw card and also a hate spike target, which is more removal in the early game. Two ride negation because we're Sharima, so we want the deny. Uh, Vagar, because we get a free removal card on his summon, whether he's climbed into, or if we just play Vagar outright, and then Vaults will kill Vagar, and that goes up into the Rampaging Bakai, which is super good. Um, and then we have Nasus, of course, Vengeance, uh, two Panic Buttons, aka Castigate. If the opponent is developing a lot of units and then trying to resolve champion strength and stuff like that, just playing a general go wide win con, well, that's pretty easy. We can just cast Cheaper Ruination that kills all of our opponent's followers while we're just sitting back on our champions or like one follower dies, but that's always worth it. So, yeah, really good AoE removal. And then we have Rekindler, of course, and around it out, we have Destin Auto, which is more darkness support. Uh, it basically gives Vagar another reason to be put into this deck, and then just gives us like AoE Darkness, which is kind of cute, and um, a nail in the coffin if the opponent is shot by like a 4 damage Darkness AoE, then there's just no coming back at that stage. So yeah, really really good deck. And that's it for the deck rundown, now here's a live commentary game so you can see how it plays out. I'll be giving context to why I'm playing certain cards, and hopefully it gives you a good feel on how to play the deck. And for the example game, we're going to be fighting a Jax Orn, which I covered on my last meta report. That's cool. I do believe this is us favored. As long as we get Quietus for their weapons and Vengeance for their Orn, it's kind of hard for them to play the game. Let's also go ahead and pitch Rekindler and Destin Auto. We just want our early game units and also 
But Kai's good at trying to find our vaults a little bit more consistently. But yeah, we have a very nice and well-rounded hand. And our vaults. This is a perfect hand. Boom, boom, bop. Let's do Forsaken by Kai. Also get Rekindler or Hate Spike. Both are super good options. Rhyme Negation's not as good. They don't have a lot of slow or fast speed stuff I care about. Mm, I'm kind of just down to hit Hate Spike. I'd rather Rekindler stay in my deck. Alright, let's try to lead with Mayhaps Quietus on this. No, I want to save Quietus for a weapon. Let's get our two free damage. Oh, or we can kill the Weaponsmith Apprentice like that. That's good too. Artisan is fine. So it's either play Sentry or float mana for Hate Spike. And I actually like floating mana here. Because so I want to play Shepherd into Vaults. That's all I really care about doing. We don't even need the Sentry on board. He kind of does nothing. Let's do Shepherd. And then we can do the Vault of Helia and just kind of let the mid game play itself out for us. Yep, all good here. And then we will. Oh no, all three Kindlers. I want one Rekindler in my deck. That's why I didn't predict them. Because we want to keep Rekindler in deck so that when Nasus dies, Rekindler gets on the board. Sure. Let's let them double forge that and then we'll quietus it and they'll probably surrender. Okay, please don't surrender. I need this to be in my video. Okay, don't surrender, but this is the correct play. Play like there's a thousand LP on the line. Don't surrender. You can still win. Trust. Don't surrender. Okay, cool. And then this is going to go up into a... Vagar. And then Vagar gives us a darkness, which is really cute. And then next turn, Rock Bear Shepherd will die. And, or not die, but... <laughs> hibernating rock bear will come out with the grumpy the grumpy dies then grumpy becomes nasus is what i'm trying to say Jax, okay that's fine by me and fish fight killing my vagar well, that's kind of an issue don't you think um i'm down to just hate spike then since vagar is dying hate spike can kill one of the grandmas and then Grandma gives me a, uh, or not Grandma, Hate Spike gives me a husk, and that's kind of cool. Challenger husk? I mean, that's kind of cute. I don't really have anything I want to hit with it, but hey, yo. I guess I can just play another Rock Bear here. Give him the extra HP. That's a Challenger Rock Bear Shepherd. Be very afraid of that. And then I'm running Rock Bear is going to count down. Okay, they're attacking. Hold up. Take two less damage. So countdown happens, and then the vaults proc happens. It's left to right. Giving us a free Nasus this turn. There we go. And Nasus is now a... A8. Just like that. Literally out of nowhere. Let's do Rampaging Bakai on the 4-3. And just like that, we... We're kind of cheating. Like, that's such a strong turn six, as long as we curve. It's kind of crazy. And the next deck I have for you is the deck that refuses to die, which is Fizz Samira. With a win rate of 53.61% and a play rate of 2.69%, it is doing very well again. Its best matchups include Nico Freljord, Azir Nasus Vaults, The Poro King, and also Sundisk. Its worst matchups are Jinx Cannon Discard, Seraphine Jack, Jinx Samira Discard, and also Vaintrox. So here we are again with another Fizz Samira aggro burn list, which wants to combo plunder effects for direct damage and also bonus effects on the units. So starting us off, we have the triple warning shot, of course, to get plunder going and for a zero mana Fizz protection spell. Then we have All Out, which is a very strong combat trick. That is also Samira's champion spell, so we have lots of access to plus two plus one, which is super good. Then we have Elegant Edge, who is a premium plunder unit, one mana, one two. Plunder get me two zero and also fearsome, so she can be a one three two with fearsome, like a Legion Rearguard, but way better, so that's awesome. Then we have Fizz, our first champion, really good to play around. Again, with Warding Shot, we have zero mana protection 
from his passive, so that's super good. He levels pretty easily in this deck since we are playing tons of spells, since Samir is casting them and all of our spells are really cheap, so he can be a very good elusive win con for us. Also, whenever he Nexus strikes on level up form, he gives us a Chum the Waters, giving us a Overwhelm Vulnerable Finish 2, which is super good, since we are whittling down the opponent, having Longtooth as a potential finisher is super awesome we also have extra access to rally outside of samira level we also have uh fizz's playful trickster which can come up if we are on multiple fizzes and we're in the mid game and need the rally win con stylish shot which is like the best card in the deck next to pirouette deal one to the enemy nexus the next time an ally strikes um the nexus also create another stylish shot in hand so it's super good just get to cash this in then start getting a bunch of plunder procs if you hit Nexus directly with anything, whether it's Long Tooth Overwhelm in the mid game or if it's early game elusives, which is going to happen quite often, you get Stylish Shot back and you can keep pinging the opponent's Nexus down and basically using this as like, you know, four or five damage over the course of the game while also proccing Plunder. Next, we have two Coral Creatures, cute little Attune card that also gives us a one cost spell from our regions so we can get more Stylish Shots, we can get Parley, we can get other stuff like that all out as well. Although we can also low roll and get Jettison and um, Bloodbait, which is really bad, but hopefully we dodge those and only get good spells. Father Fury, same thing, we get the uh, one cost spells as long as we plunder, but he's also elusive, so that's really good at trying to proc uh, Stylish Shot passives for us and get more stylish shots in our hand which is super super good then we have pirouette which is the other best card in the deck plunder i cost one less also deal one to anything and stun an enemy can use this as damage to nexus or we can execute a one hp unit while also stunning something which is super good especially on defense turn gets to bias like one or two more actions and then we can like win the game with it it's a really flexible card that has like both defensive and aggressive utility so yeah really really broken Samira, of course, our other champion, she wants us to play a whole bunch of cards while she sees it. This also uh, resets, so we need to play six cards before it's our next attack turn, and then she'll level, and then whenever we play six car cards onwards uh, before it resets, we also get to rally. That's really good. Uh, she also gives us a flare on summon and on strike. Deal one to the enemy nexus, so basically like a stylish shot effect. Or you can also give an allied Samira Challenger, and that's really good since Challenger plus Quick Attack means A, we get to control the early board, let Samira strike into things, get more flares, pop more shots, level her, level Fizz, and all that good stuff. Next we have Triple Swindle, which most of the time we're going to play for one because of the plunder. We get to manifest, so look at the opponent's hand, we get to see three options and pick one, and now it's ours, and that's really good. We can start playing with the opponent's cards. Um, yeah, we can just get like extra damage, we can get removal, we can get stuns, it just kind of depends on the matchup, whatever you're fighting, you can get some good stuff, and also like the hand knowledge is super important so you know what the opponent is on, that way you can play around it better. Triple Barb Chain for draw and refill, of course, really easy, really simple. Next we have two Inferna. When you activate Plunder, draw one and give it Fleeting. Inferna is really good in like the slower matchups where you need to uh, play her out and refill your hand and uh, try to push try to push through um all the opponent's removal using inferno for refill in like the mid late game is super good super valuable she's not really like a turn four slam because obviously if you try to do plunder stuff while she's on turn four you're going to start drawing and losing your hand so yeah she's better in like the mid late game and we have shelly and burblefish which was like the original like samira fizz strength like, these cards were insane. And then we moved to Powder Pandemonium. That card recently got nerfed. So now it's back to Shelly and Burblefish spam. So we want to get Shelly on the board and get our Burblefishes nice and cheap. Play a bunch of elusives. Play a bunch of spells in one turn. And then we have a very big elusive uh, growing win con. And that's really scary for the opponent to deal with. If uh, this deck gets a little bit ahead, it gets a lot ahead. With the Shelly, Inferna, Burblefish, Fizz all coming down. Just spam a bunch of spells. Because, like, this Shelly effect is not once per turn. That's kind of, like, what makes this card broken. You can just spam, like, six spells, and that gives everything else plus three, plus three, and then you win the game, right? Like, no matter what, if you're on that kind of board, you just basically win. And it's really scary. A Burble Fish as well. It got nerfed a bit ago, but playing eight spells, not that hard with this deck, obviously. So we can play this for free, get the one-cost spell from the region. Ideally, it's the broken ones, not the bad ones. And then, yeah, we just play spam, elusive aggro in the mid-game. Which is kind of cringe, but hey, that's what this deck devolves to sometimes. And that's it for the rundown. Now here's a live commentary game, so you can see how it plays out. And for this example game, we're going to be fighting Oro King in Freljord. Alright. 
I do believe this is a good matchup for us. We want to open with some combination of like elusives and also some early pings. I want to keep Father Fury for sure. It's probably pitch the rest. Try to get Silas Shot and also Warning Shot and our champions. Pirouette. Swindle. Very interesting. Fizz. Fizz is super good. I don't want to play him super early though, right? They could be on the Challenger Poro. So let's play Fizz on turn two. He's a lot safer then. Play Fizz. See if they put up a blocker. If not, we're gonna sw okay. We're gonna swing and then play Swindle. We can also do Coral Creatures next turn. Yeah, let's Swindle. Go ahead and grab here to help. But now we know they have three sisters here to help and Poro stories. So let's grab the here to help and try to keep those in mind. Three sisters here to help Poro stories. All right, I can do that. Uh, we don't want to play Stylus Shot on defense turn. Uh, Elusive Poor Bot's fine, I'll just stun it. So we're going to do Coral Creatures here. Just make sure we have our mana efficiency. And that's fine. This could be here to help. Three Sisters, Poor Stories. Okay, let's go ahead and block here. It's fine. Two, take two less damage. And then this turn, we're going to start playing some shenanigans. So let's do Stylus Shot into Father Fury. Get our mana back. Noxion Tellstones, that's a really good card actually. It's super flexible. We can do a strike in combat or we can do a really big buff, which we can translate to direct nexus damage. Um, let's also do Pirouette. Let us deal one and stun. Here to help. Let's just deal one to face. No, let's do it. Deal one stun. I'm down to put Poro Herder down to 1 HP. And then we can float Noxion Pellstone's mana with Sharpen Resolve. Poro Stories, yep. Just don't get an elusive one for me, okay? Boom, boom, bop. And then... Commit. No here to help? Interesting. I was actually going to do, like, Pellstone's Sharpen Resolve if they wanted to here to help, maybe. Maybe I wouldn't, but... Um, if we do our here to help, we get matched, which is bad. All right, this is fine. Let's just get the stylus shot back, and then we can play out like the jailbreak. And our bubble fish is getting nice and cheap. <laughs> That's funny. We could have had another elusive. Um, pass. Barbed chain. Okay. I'm kind of down to just slam Inferno this turn, right? Um, we could also take this attack. I don't really mind just taking three to face. Yeah, let's Inferno. If we had Shelly this turn, I think we'd have like a really strong pop off turn six. Spell Shield Quick Attack. That's a pretty good combo, yeah. Pass. All right. It's going to be a big combo turn for us. Let's go ahead and do Stylish Shot into Father Fury. Get our mana back. Draw a card from Inferna. Hmm. It's fleeting. Give an enemy vulnerable. Okay, we can give Porobot vulnerable and just grab it with something. That's super nice. Let's also play Barb Chain. That's Fizz level. And also Inferna draw me a card since that is a plunder. Samira. Uh, we can play her. No need to make a name for myself. Just an impression. Told you, this is a really big combo turn. We're popping off. We get to play a lot of cards. Um, Samira, let's do... Actually, we don't even have to play anything with her. Oh, we should, though. Because we have the mana to do... Oh, I want to do test in here to help, maybe. Alright, so let's give this vulnerable... Grab that with my 2-1 way over here. That way we just took away an elusive blocker from them. And then just send it. Yeah. I might want to do here to help this turn. I'm assuming some kind of frostbite shenanigans, right? They have three sisters, we know that. Here's harsh winds for double frostbiting. And that's it. They're just going to send it after that. Um... 
All right, let's do Flare to pop a free shot. Because when Samira strikes, we're going to get another one. So this is just going to be closer to lethal. We can also play our weekly verbal fish. And warning shot. And pass. Yeah, it's pretty cool. We get to be like a spell slinging kind of deck sometimes. One, two, three, four. We have four damage. This is just immediately dying. Hmm. No thank you. Not if I have anything to say about it. We're going to do here to help that we stole from them. And then we can also do the warning shots. Beautiful and brutal. Just how I like it. We should get up to 5 damage with the Samira strike as well. Flare. Deal 1. And then we can be on Flare plus Stylish Stylish, and that's lethal right away. I'm also showing them, hey, I want to keep my Fizz alive. So yeah, that's a lot of pressure, and then we have Elusive Lethal, which again, kind of cringe, but it is what it is. And the final deck I have for you is another take on Jinx Discard that has come up recently, and that is Jinx Bandle City featuring Kennen. With a win rate of 55.43% and a play rate of 2.16%, it is indeed a very explosive and powerful deck. Its best matchups are Ash LeBanc, Fizz Samira, Jin Annie, and also Jack Samira. The worst matchups are Swain Alawi, Echo Jinx, Kane Aatrox, and Narjin Bandle Control. So getting right into it, it has a lot of the spice from the Jinx Samira Noxus discard, but instead of the Noxus cards, we are in Bandle City instead. And what Kennen is doing is actually not a whole lot. Kennen's in here because you get a free spell that you can discard sometimes. Um, yeah, that's kind of it. We're not trying to level Kennen. We're not trying to play around Kennen. He's just kind of there. If we are ever on double Kennen though, you know, his champion spell can turn into two direct damage to the enemy Nexus, which is pretty relevant since, again, we're not in Noxus, so we don't have as much direct damage as usual, but we do have blowback from P and Z, we have Lightning Rush here, we have Electro Harpoon, so we can still get there. We can still get there, and that's pretty cool. Other than that, we have Forge Chief, of course, 1-2-1, one, one, Strike Refill, 1 Mana, Jury Rig, good discard target, Enon, which we already talked about. Yordle Squire, who creates a discard target, or sometimes we can use these. Maybe we push things up to fearsome blocking range, and that's kind of relevant, but for the most part, these are discard targets. Zonai Urchin, who is a discard activator, really nice at hitting our jury rig, especially in the early game. Try to cycle through the deck and hit our Jinx in the mid game, right? This deck, just like most discard strategies, is equipped with a lot of draw, since the discard cards do that automatically, and that's super good for champion consistency. Then we have Boom Baboon, who is a nice early game unit that also gives us a discard target. Super good. Electro Harpoon, which is a discard activator. Discard one and deal two to, the, to an enemy unit and to the enemy Nexus. So we basically get to cast Mystic Shot twice. It is slow speed, so keep that in mind. But slow speed Mystic is pretty good, especially when we get to double dip on the damage. Speaking of Mystic Shot, we do run three of those. Next, we have Return O Wrench, which is basically why this deck has the Bandle City identity. It's why we're going into Bandle Second Region. It's a pretty cool weapon that also is a discard synergy card. So when I'm discarded, equip me to a random unequipped ally and it has impact. That's the only aggressive thing it does. It doesn't give any stats or anything, but hey, one free impact is pretty nice, especially since when the unit dies, this card goes back to your hand and can become a discard target again. So if we're pretty heavy on activators, but we don't have any good targets, well, sheesh, Return of Wrench will just do that for us. Next, we have Squeaker, 2 mana 2 2 augment. Play discard 1 to manifest a Mecha Yordle. So, this is a really strong card. Not only does it grow as we play created cards like the Mecha Yordles themselves, but the Mecha Yordles are really strong units. They're really, really scary. Um, most of them are like pretty game winning in terms of pressure, especially when we're playing such an aggressive deck. So, it's kind of hard for the opponent to deal with our unit pressure, our discard pressure, our champion pressure, and then also our mech yordle pressure on top of that. So yeah, Squeaker can get out of control while also being a good discard synergy card. 
Next, we have Yep Clock, 4 mana 2 2 elusive unit, predict draw. It's pretty much just in here for like the draw consistency, and it's just like a little elusive body. He's not super important, not super great, just kind of there. We could hit Jinx with it, and that's pretty nice for like just consistency of the deck. Then we have Blowback, which is P and Z Noxion Fervor. All we need to do is discard two cards and we can deal three to something while also dealing three to the enemy Nexus, which is really good. Just like Electro Harpoon, we're double dipping the damage. We can also opt to make this deal two if we only discard one, or we can discard none and it deals one to two things. So we can use this in a bunch of different ways. But yeah, ideally we want to be discarding two things, which is good for us to also deal three damage to uh, Nexus and to a unit of choice. Really good. And of course we have Jinx herself, the discard champion. If our hand is empty, she levels, and when she levels, she gets a 3 damage rocket to hand that also deals 1 AoE to the board. Super good. And yeah, she draws us more cards, we re-empty our hand. Multiple Jinxes is direct damage, get more rockets, boom. Burn win con. And then we have Parts Made Whole, which is a card that we can actually run in this deck because Return of Wrench plus Parts Made Whole is a really broken combo. Worst case scenario, we have to discard like non-wrench, but that's still draw two, which is really good. Um, but if we do hit the wrench, we also get a 3-2 body. And that's really nice, especially for like burst attacking or for burst blocking if we don't need the weapon anymore. So yeah, super sick synergy. And that's it for the deck rundown. Now here's a live commentary game so you can see how this deck plays out. And for the example game, we're going to be fighting Kane Aatrox, which from what I remember in the stats, I think this is a bad deck for us to fight. But we're going to try our best. We do have Urchin Jury Rig. We have Baboon Wrench. Pretty good early hand, honestly. Could probably get rid of Baboon. Just keep the rig. Yeah, because we have like too many targets already. Boom Baboon, not super good. It's probably just Urchin Jury Rig. It's either that or Forge Chief right now. Um, yeah, let's do Forge. Remember, we're the ones who make progress they picked happen. a weapon or a champion. That's why the Bakai is a 3-2. And we can do Urchin. Ooh, do Urchin Wrench. And then do Urchin Jury. I like that. I'll put Wrench on one of these. Nice. Wrench Forge Chief is pretty good. And then we can do Urchin Rig. Then we're on Mystic Double Blowback. Interesting. Go ahead and send in all this. I don't think we want to attack with our 1-1. Have it die for free. Let's just pressure current board. We get that. And then... That's it. Alright, yeah, they would have definitely blocked 4-2-1-1. Which would be bad for us. We got our mana back, so we're back up to 4, which is super good. Electro Harpoon. It's cute. Fanatic. Um, let's go ahead and do Electro Harpoon. Discarding Wrench, shooting the 4-2. Which puts our wrench back into play. Yeah, you can get your cane, that's fine. Can't really stop you, Captain. And then pass. Only taking four is pretty good. I think we're just gonna open attack and try to go for like some kind of burn lethal, aren't we? Um Yeah, if we develop Jinx, they can just play Shadow Fiend as a blocker. Which is kind of a big attack deterrent. So I feel like I have to attack first and then play Jinx after. And we're just going to keep pushing damage that way. We do have a lot of damage in hand. Realistically. There's like a ton of damage. So let's do Jinx. Can't we like turbo level her next turn as well? Since we can just do blowback and mystic shot. As long as they're not on like a strike spell or something. Alright, let's see what we're doing here. Forge Chief. Yeah, I think it's Blowback and Mystic Face. Just like, shoot the face only. Blowback. Deal three to that, I guess. Bop, bop. And then bop, same action. I mean, that's a lot of damage. Bop. And can't even kill my Jinx, but I mean, they're probably on a buff. Sure. Huh. I must have 
I spell shield. And then what? Because Kane, you can't kill my Jinx unless... Do you still have the buff? You still have Momentous? Don't you Momentous me. You have to kill my wrench, I would think. Yeah. Alright, well yeah, if they're not on a buff, I just win through. Wrench plus Jinx Rocket. Holy. So yeah, to wrap things up, the meta is very explosive right now, with these three decks coming up basically out of nowhere. Along with the three from last week, it's looking like there are a lot of strong choices for the meta, with every archetype getting a little bit of representation. It is a shame that aggro has to rely on degeneracy like elusives and discard, but hey, I'll take it. Maybe Jinani buff soon, who knows. This has been Meta Report. Thank you so much for watching, and have a good one. Laters!